Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hi, thank you so much for being with me today. I'm going to do something a little bit different today because today, August 11th, 2022, the day that this episode is launching, is a really special day for me. So I'm going to celebrate it with you and share some stuff about the novel that I wrote and recently launched. The title is The Left Turn, Two Lives, Worlds Apart. And I'd like to share a little bit more about the journey. If you listened to the interview episode that we had a few weeks ago, this will probably touch on some of those same things, but mostly I'm going to talk about some things that we didn't get to in that episode. So the thing that's special about today for me and my novel is that today is the first day of a three-day big promotional push, and the ebook is free right now, and I'm going to give you the link now, and I'm also going to give it to you at the end of the episode, and I'll put it in the description of the episode as well. And that link is bit.ly slash geist hyphen su1. So it's bit, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Geist is G-E-I-S-T hyphen S-U stands for split universe. And the number one is because it's the first book in the split universe series. I'm going to back up now several years and share some of the journey of this project. And then we'll come back to the present and to today where you'll get a sense of what led up to today and why this day came about the way that it did for me. One of the things that I'm finding really interesting is how the more time and energy and resources that I put into the project, the more it spurs me on and stimulates me and inspires me to keep going and keep growing. And just to back up to the beginning, this project started about nine years ago almost exactly nine years ago in the San Francisco Bay Area. And it started when I was on a bike ride with the guy who was my husband at the time. And he was riding ahead and I was riding behind. And the thought flashed through my mind, well, what if I just turned left? And it wasn't so much about a particular direction as it was about stepping out of the life that I was living What if I just kind of disappeared from the life that I was in? Well, I have these kinds of random thoughts all the time. No big deal. But this one stuck with me. And so I wrote down the scene that had formulated in my mind. And very quickly, I also understood what the end of this story was. So that ending scene also came to me very quickly. And as I had shared in the, I did share some of this in that other episode, but kind of came to me in scene by scene in sort of a popcorn way. Anyway, sort of jumping forward through that writing process, the next big nudge that I got to actually finish it was from my editor, David Colin Carr, who is an exceptional editor, and we worked so well together. I'm really, really grateful for him and who he is and what he helped me do in terms of the editing of the book and the development of my own writing. It came about because he had finished his book that he'd been working on for a long time and wanted to do some exchange where I would record his audiobook and he would help me with my editing. And I had identified early on, many years before, that if I ever got around to finishing this book, that I wanted him to be my editor. So this just felt like the perfect nudge from the universe to get going and get it done. So that's what I did. Once we made that agreement, it actually still took a couple of few more years before getting it all the way to completion. 
And because the more I worked on it, the more I cared about it, I found that I was making decisions about how to proceed in those final stages of writing that kept kicking me up into the next higher gear, the next level of where I was operating. And I don't know how many other writers struggle with this, but I did find as I was getting near the end when I had pretty much certainly a good solid fifth draft or I don't know, maybe third draft or whatever, I was talking to people about what I was doing and they would ask me, oh, well, what's it about? So the classic question. And I definitely found that it was really challenging to answer that question because, of course, there's so many elements to it that I know about, but trying to hone it down into a a really clear statement about what it's about became a learning process in itself. And what I mean is that I actually learned more about my own book by trying to describe it to other people. There was one conversation in a parking lot where I live with someone who had been a neighbor and had was visiting and he was he asked me that question and as I started to talk about it I realized that when I described how this inciting incident caused my protagonist to not have access to her recent memory not have access to most of the baggage that that she carried with her throughout her life and that that basically freed her up to make some new choices now she doesn't experience it like being freed up it is like major panic attack moment for her because it feels like a big disaster that she can't access that immediate past memory but the more i talked with him about the book and and what this story was and what was important to it about me the more i figured out what those things were i'm going to share with you now that book description so you know what my book is about if your past vanished who might you become Hannah, a 46-year-old author plagued with anxiety, and her partner James, an HR recruiter caught in a headlock of grief over his brother's death, are as desperate for inner peace as they are clueless about how to find it. But when they embark on a sunny bike ride shortly after moving to the San Francisco Bay Area, a split-second decision propels them into different versions of their lives, ones they don't recognize as their own. With a mental fog obscuring their recent past and who they were, they are forced to dig inside themselves to figure out who they are now. Surprising discoveries about the nature of the universe send them on a psychological journey towards who they can be. But will they be able to let go of their deeply ingrained subconscious beliefs about life and themselves to embrace the unfamiliar potentials they now face? combines parallel universes, wisdom, and wonder into an inspiring tale of self-discovery. Reminiscent of the film Sliding Doors and novels The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver, and related to books The Bond and The Field by Lynn McTaggart. I wanted to read that whole thing to you because there are things that I had to figure out along the way regarding marketing that then played into the final description or the current description of the book. One of those things was that last paragraph about comparables. What are the books and who are the authors that are also writing in a vein that is attracting the same audience that is my target audience. Through that exploration, it helped me identify what keywords they might be using. It also helped me identify hashtags and by looking at their social media channels and also the book categories by looking on Amazon and seeing what categories those books are in. All of these things were a part of my research that then led to a piece of my book description. 
and this is something that I've talked about in recent episodes, this kind of research can be really helpful overall in your marketing, not just your audiobook marketing, but all of your marketing. Another piece of my process that really informed things as I moved forward was having beta readers. Not only did my beta readers, who were wonderful, give me some great information and feedback that I was then able to incorporate to make it even better, but when I gave them a feedback form to help me gather their feedback and gather their comments, I did also ask them what parts of the book really spoke to them. And from that, I was able to get some early comments about what they really valued about the book. And that then also helped me to better understand what impact the story was having. Jumping ahead a little bit further, as I stepped into the marketing even further, I signed up with NetGalley for both the audiobook and the ebook. And some early reviews are coming in from that that are really helpful, valuable, and I so appreciate. I'm getting great reviews, so I appreciate that too. But it helps me, again, when people are writing about what's meaningful to them, for me to understand how much bigger this story is than just me. When I released the audio first and we went through the whole production process and because I had a co-narrator, we had a chance to do the interview that we shared on an earlier episode here in this podcast. And it was great to hear how much the story also meant to him as my fellow narrator and to our project manager, Jared. So all of these different directions I was getting feedback from very helpful, but also very positive and inspires me to keep going when I get that kind of really positive feedback and how people are benefiting from the story itself. And then somewhere along the way, and I'm not actually sure exactly when it happened, but it was in my plan fairly early on, but has grown as I get the positive comments, and that is that I've been doing a monthly online chat. You know, it's just like a Zoom call where I invite anyone that would like to talk about the big questions in life. That's really fun for me, and it's not the kind of conversation that we typically have every day while we're visiting our neighbors or or friends. We are usually talking about much more daily stuff rather than diving into the rabbit holes of life. And it is fascinating to me to hear other people's experiences with things like synchronicities and other kinds of paranormal experiences, and also to hear, you know, people who have not had those kinds of experiences and have a different perspective on life. I love having all those voices in the room without anyone having to be right or wrong or just hearing each other, being with each other, and opening that discussion about the big things. When I say the big things, I am really trying to talk in a general way about how things work in the universe, who we are, why we are here, How does intention and mindfulness and meditation make a difference in our lives? Do we create our own reality? And if so, what does that really mean? Those kinds of questions, the big ones. I love diving down those rabbit holes with other people and getting their ideas about that and what they have discovered and learned in the process of their own lives and uh, reading and experiences with other people. So now we're doing these monthly chats, and I would love to have more people join us. So here's how you can do that if you would like. First of all, the next one from the date of this launch, the next one coming up will be September 7th. And regardless of when you listen to this episode, If you go to my author website at beckyparkergeist.com, 
you can sign up to get updates. And then there are also events showing there on the website. And the website is still fairly new, and I'm still sorting out a lot of things on there, but the basic information is accurate, and it's really going to be the best place to find that way to sign up for updates, and then also what those updates will be. Book two is In the Cooker. It's simmering, and my plan is to launch it next year. I don't know if that is a realistic goal, but that's the one I have set for myself. So we'll see. And meanwhile, I hope that you will grab a free copy of the ebook today, August 11th, 2022. We have a three day promotion where the ebook is free. And again, that link is bit.ly slash geist hyphen S U one. This kind of big promotional push with a free ebook is a new process to me. It's not something that I have done before. So once I have gotten through it and uh, some of the other marketing that I'm doing, I will happily share what I have found that works really well and in hopes that you can also take advantage of whatever it is that I experience, whether it's positive or negative. In any case, I hope that it will provide benefit to you, my listeners. Thanks for being with me. We're going to wrap up with a sample from my audiobook. I hope that you'll stay to listen and enjoy. Thanks so much. If your past vanished, who might you become? Hannah, a 46-year-old author plagued with anxiety, and her partner, James, an HR recruiter caught in a headlock of grief over his brother's death, are as desperate for inner peace as they are clueless about how to find it. But when they embark on a sunny bike ride shortly after moving to the San Francisco Bay Area, a split-second decision propels them into different versions of their lives, ones they don't recognize as their own. With a mental fog obscuring their recent past and who they were, they are forced to dig inside themselves to figure out who they are now. Surprising discoveries about the nature of the universe send them on a psychological journey towards who they can be. But will they be able to let go of their deeply ingrained subconscious beliefs about life and themselves to embrace the unfamiliar potentials they now face? Get your copy of The Left Turn, Two Lives, Worlds Apart, book one in the Split Universe series, at bit.ly slash geist hyphen su1. That's bit dot l-y slash g-e-i-s-t hyphen s-u the number one. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week.